This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I will show you how to configure a package that ignores errors and continues running the for each loop container. You've probably had this happen at some point in your career that you have a package that's been running just fine. It has a for each loop container in it and it's processing several files or several tables or several something. And then all of a sudden one day when it executes, it fails because there was a problem with one of the files or tables or whatever you're processing. And what you would actually prefer is for it to process all the files that it can process successfully and uh, yeah, skip the ones that uh, are going to cause a failure. And we'll go over to the table. So it's not important what I was doing, but I was just copying files, Excel files, from a folder into a, um, a SQL Server table. And so now we can see it copied over uh, all of the files until it got to the the problem file that doesn't actually exist in the folder. And there you can see we had 1,368 rows copied over. I'm going to clear out the table before I make changes to the package to get it to run the way I want it to. Please stay tuned to see how I do this. <laughs> So I'm going to right mouse click on the 4-H loop container and go down and select properties. And then here on the force execution result property, I'm going to change that from none to success. And that means it'll always say that it succeeded. And then down here for maximum error count, I'm going to change that from 1 to 0. And 0 means I don't care how many errors there are, just keep running. So now I'll save the package and we'll execute it again. and it completed successfully. So I'll stop debugging and we'll go look at the table again. And there you can see we copied all the rows that we should have. We now have 1,413 rows um, because it just kept going after it encountered the problem file. And I forgot to show you the execution results when we were over in Visual Studio. So here they are. And you can see it's mostly everything was successful. There's where the problem shows up, but it kept on executing and uh, finished the package. So now I'm going to show you another way to accomplish the same thing. This is a new package and it does not have the variables set the way I just showed you to set them. So we're starting with a fresh situation with a package that will fail because of a bad file. And I'll go to the event handler. And here I need to select the task that would fail. This is very important. And in this situation, it's the data flow task. And now I click on this link saying, click here to create an on-air event handler for executable, and then the name of the data flow task. And now I'll go down here to my variables and I click on Grid Options, and I select this top checkbox, Show System Variables, and I click OK. And I'll make this a little bigger. And we're going to scroll down until we find the Propagate variable. And here the default is set to True, meaning it's going to propagate the error up to the parent and fail the package as soon as it encounters it. So we set it to false, and now it'll just not propagate the error. 
and uh, now we have a special situation with this package so with most packages that's all you'll need to do and then you'll execute the package and it will do what you want it to do it'll process all the files that it can or tables or whatever you're working with and um, just skip over the ones that have a problem but the Excel source component is special and uh, for some reason the way it does its validation during the processing it will still cause the package to fail even with that variable set so I right mouse clicked on the Excel source I go down to properties and here's the validate external metadata property I'm going to set that to false now again, you only have to do this if you're working with an Excel source component. So now I'll save the package and I'll execute it. All right, and it was successful. So I'll stop debugging and we'll go look at the execution results and we'll scroll down. And there you can see the um, when it was trying to process the file that didn't actually exist. And then it continued and processed uh, a couple more files. So we'll go over to the um, Management Studio and we'll check out this table. And it has 1,413 rows in it, which is the total number of rows. So it did uh, process all the files that actually existed. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.